So we're going to preheat the oven to 350. So what I have here is I have the ingredients for the upside down pineapple cake. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start measuring things out. And when I have them measured out, I'll bring you back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the topping for the upside down pineapple cake. And what you'll need is you'll need your machine or cherries. You'll need your um, pineapple, which I have a can right here. You'll need um, one third of a cup of butter. We're going to melt that in a sec. And you'll also need a cup of brown sugar. And that beep there was letting me know that the oven's reached its uh, temperature. So I'm just going to heat up the butter and I'll bring you forward and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So what we have here is our one third of a cup of uh, butter and it's melted. So we're just going to pour it into the bowl. And we're going to take our cup of sugar, which I have packed in here. We're going to mix that in, so I'm just going to put that in there as well. Probably could have put that in a little bit more gracefully, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to take a spoon, and I'm going to mix that up. And once we get it mixed up, what we're going to do is we're going to take it and spread it on the bottom of the uh, square 9-inch um, pan that I'm going to bake it in. And then we're going to lay our... Uh, pineapple and our cherries in. So I'm just going to mix this up and I'll bring it forward when we're putting it inside the, uh, the pan. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that brown sugar mixture with the butter and we're just going to put it in the bottom of this pan and we're just going to spread it out. And you want it to pretty well be covered the bottom for you can put the fruit in. is a little easier to move when it's warm so you want to work quick and you're just going to spread it nice and uh, thin evenly would work best So what we're going to do now is we're going to start putting our fruit in there and we're just going to do it in whatever pattern you want. I'm uh, going to do mine kind of like this. And then I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut a ring in half. make little squigglies. Now you can do whatever pattern you want. And I have three rings left, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and put it on the side like that and that one right there this one here and I have one more ring I got that one there that one right there is fine. So now we're going to take some cherries. Now it doesn't matter if you use red or if you use green. Now I have both colors, so I'm going to put a green a red one here. And I'm going to put a green here, and another green here, green here. 
ya. Right here. So I'm just going to finish putting in the cherries and I'm going to move to the next step. This is what it looks like when it's finished being uh, decorative. And as you can see, it's uh, looking pretty good. So we're just going to set it aside and then we're going to work on the cake. So I'm just going to bring you to that. So what we're going to do to make the uh, cake mix is what we're going to do is we're going to add in a half a cup of butter, which we have right here, and it has been softened. We're going to add in our cup of sugar. And we're going to add in our two eggs and our one tablespoon of vanilla. And I have all that pre-measured. Here's the vanilla. the eggs. We're going to get those. And it's two eggs that you're putting in there. What we're going to do is we're going to take your electric mixer and we're going to beat that together until it's creamy. And I love my new bowl. This is a bowl my mom just got me yesterday, so I was excited to try it out. So I'm just going to beat this until it's creamed together, and I'll bring you back. That that's creamed together what we're going to do is we're going to add in our 175 milliliters of milk and I have that pre-measured and we're going to mix that again with the mixer what we're going to do now is now that we added the milk in and it's combined we're going to add the rest of our ingredients in which is the one teaspoon of the baking powder which I have right here and we're just going to add that in and the one-fourth of the salt that I have measured and your one cup and three-fourths of another cup of flour so I'm just going to beat that until it's mixed up So this is what your mix is going to look like once you have it mixed up. So we're just going to take it and put it over the pineapple now. So here we have the pineapple and we have the mix and we're going to cover that up. And we're going to try to do it nice and even. We'll smooth it out once we get it in there. And you want to be careful not to rub too hard because you don't want to uh, move around your, um, your pineapple too much if you want your design. I do love my new bowl. I must uh, call my mom when I'm done. And let her know what a great bowl it is. Might actually pick up another couple of them. Because when you're baking and doing stuff in the kitchen, you can never have enough bowls. Especially if you're like me and you bring food to places. So I'm just going to continue to smooth that out and I'll show you what it looks like before we put it in the oven. 
So now that we have it ready for the oven, what we're going to do is we're going to bake it to between 50 and 60 minutes until the toothpick comes out and it's clean. So I'm just going to put it in the oven and I'll fast forward and show you what it looks like. So bake it at 350 for check on it about 55 minutes. So I'm just going to get a toothpick now. The timer went off and we're going to see if the uh, toothpick comes back clean. So here's the toothpick. I'm going to poke it through. And it did come back clean, so it is done. So we're going to let it cool down for 10 minutes, and then we're going to flip it upside down. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a butter knife and work around the edges to make sure it doesn't stick to the edges when I flip it upside down. I have been letting it cool down for a few minutes, so it's a lot cooler now. And I'm just going to flip it upside down onto a plate. And hopefully it goes without any kind of incident. So there you have it, there's my upside down cake and it looks like it's beautiful. Like, subscribe and thanks for watching.